The Adventure of the Speckled Band is the eighth Sherlock Holmes short story and the tenth Holmes story overall, following the novels A Study in Scarlet and The Sign of Four by British author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It was originally published in Strand Magazine in February 1892 with illustrations by Sidney Paget, and later as the eighth story in the collection of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The story tells of Helen Stoner, a soon-to-be-married young woman who suspects her stepfather may be trying to kill her in order to retain control of her inheritance. Convinced of her stepfather's intentions, she turns to Holmes for help. The Adventure of the Speckled Band is a classic locked room mystery that deals with the theme of parental greed, inheritance, and freedom. Tinged with Gothic elements, it is considered by many to be one of Doyle's finest works with the author himself calling it his best story. The story alongside the rest of Sherlock Holmes' canon has become a defining part of detective fiction. It has been adopted for television, film, theater, radio, and a video game. It is also part of the exhibit at the Sherlock Holmes Museum. The Theatrical adaptation was written and produced by Doyle himself. The plot summary, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson rise unusually early one morning to meet a young woman named Helen Stoner, who fears that her stepfather, Dr. Grimsby Roylet, is threatening her life. Roy Lutt is a doctor who practiced in Calcutta, India, and was married to Helen's late mother when she was a widow living in India. He is also the impoverished last survivor of what was once a wealthy but violent, ill-tempered and amoral Anglo-Saxon aristocratic family of Surrey and has already served a jail sentence for killing his Indian butler in a rage. Helen's twin sister died almost two years earlier, shortly before she was to be married. Helen had heard her sister's dying words, quote, the speckled band, but could not decode their meaning. Helen herself troubled by the perplexing death of her sister, is now engaged. She has begun to hear strange noises and observe strange activities around Stoke Moran, the impoverished and heavily mortgaged estate where she and her stepfather live. Dr. Roy Lott also keeps strange company at his estate. He is friendly with a band of gypsies on the property, and he has a cheetah and a baboon as pets. For some time, he has been making changes to the house. Before Helen's sister's death, he had modifications made inside the house and is now having the outside wall repaired, forcing Helen to move into the room where her sister died. Holmes listens carefully to Helen's story and agrees to take the case. He plans to visit the manor later in the day. Before he can leave, he is visited by Dr. Royalot himself, who threatens him should he interfere. Undaunted, Holmes proceeds to the courthouse where he examines Helen's late mother's will and then to the countryside. At Stoke Moran, Holmes 
scrutinizes the premise inside and out. Among the strange features that he discovers are a bed anchored to the floor, a bell cord that is not attached to any bell, and a ventilator hole between Helen's temporary room and that of Dr. Roylette. Holmes and Watson arrange to spend the night in Helen's room. In darkness, they wait until about three in the morning. Suddenly, a slight metallic noise and a dim light through the ventilator prompts Holmes to action. Quickly lighting a candle, he discovers on the bell cord the speckled band, a venomous snake. He strikes at the snake with his walking stick, driving it back through the ventilator. Agitated, it fatally attacks Royalette, who had been waiting for it to return after killing Helen. Holmes identifies the snake as an Indian swamp adder and reveals to Holmes the motive. The late wife had provided an annual income of 750 pounds sterling, of which each daughter could claim one-third upon marriage. Thus, Dr. Royalette plotted to uh, remove both of his stepdaughters before they married to avoid losing most of the fortune he controlled when the daughters uh, took with them their share of the money left for them by their mother. Holmes admits his attack on the state may make him indirectly responsible for Roylet's demise, but he doesn't foresee it troubling him since his action saved Helen's life. The inspiration for the story comes from Richard Green, the editor of the 2000 Oxford paperback edition of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Green surmises that Doyle's source for the story appears to have been an article named Called On by a Bow Constrictor, a West African adventure in Cassell's Saturday Journal, published in February 1891. In the article, a captain tells how he was dispatched to a remote camp in West Africa to stay in a tumble-down cabin that belonged to a Portuguese trader. On the first night in the cabin, he was awoken by a creaking sound and sees a dark, queer-looking thing hanging down through the ventilator above it. It turns out to be a large bow constrictor he has seen more likely a python because there are no bows in Africa. He is paralyzed with fear as the serpent comes down into the room. Unable to cry for help, the captain spots an old bell that hung from a projected beam above one of the windows. The bell cord had rotted away by means of a stick. He manages to ring it and raise alarm. So that's a little bit about our story, The Speckled Band, probably the most uh, famous of all the short stories of uh, Sherlock Holmes.